Okay, so what we've got here is our basic respirometer. It's only a basic respirometer because our more complicated ones can actually have two tubes, which I'll explain later. Let's take you through the parts of the respirometer, okay? So first of all, we have got a simple boiling tube here. And in a little container here, we have got some organisms which are going to respire aerobically. And those are just some magnets, okay? So they're going to be respiring with oxygen, okay? Glucose plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide plus water. This is going to be really important to understand that. And they're taking in oxygen, okay? They're putting out carbon dioxide. Interesting to know, maggots don't have lungs. They do all of that by diffusing through their, uh, through their um, skin, okay? So they're absorbing oxygen through diffusion. They're putting out carbon dioxide by diffusion. Now, attached to that, we've got a sealed, and this is really important, a sealed uh, bung here, which we put a little bit of extra Vaseline around to seal it. And we've got a capillary tube, which is a very thin tube. And we've already set this up. This very thin tube contains just over here, you've got a small amount of a red dye. Now, this is just red food colouring with a little bit of uh, washing up liquid added to give it a bit more viscosity so it's a bit more stable. But basically, it's a just a, a bubble. Now, the important thing is, is now that bubble's there, that seals this entire section. So if any gas gets used in this tube, that bubble is going to move in that direction. If gas got produced, it would move in this direction, okay? Now, at the moment, the actual apparatus isn't sealed because we've got a three-way tap here. At the moment, the tap is pointed so that this bit is open to the air, okay? Because we want the tap, okay, to be uh, open so that the uh, maggots can still get oxygen from outside. We haven't sealed it yet, so this isn't moving. We've also got a syringe. The only purpose of the syringe, and you shouldn't need to use the syringe today, is to reset this. Under no circumstances, without my supervision, touch the syringe. Because if you touch the syringe, it will, and you get it, you do it wrong, you will push the uh, red dye out of the capillary tube and the experiment won't work. And all these have been pre-set up for you. The red syringe, uh, the red uh, dye here is put in just by a uh, syringe into the end, okay? And so it's a tricky procedure, which is why we've done it before. So, now we're ready to go. We've got this three-way tap. At the moment, the tap is open to the outside. When we turn the tap around, it's not going to be open to the outside anymore. At that point, it's going to be a closed system and carbon dioxide is going to be produced and oxygen is going to be used. Now in that situation, this wouldn't move because the same volume of oxygen used would equal to the same volume of carbon dioxide produced. So if it produced a milliliter of carbon dioxide, it would use a milliliter of oxygen. So that'd be pretty pointless for an apparatus, wouldn't it? It's not going to measure anything. So what we need to do is we need to actually chemically lock away the carbon dioxide. And so we add this special chemical. Now, there are two chemicals you can use for this. This chemical here is called soda lime. The other chemical you can use is a liquid called potassium hydroxide, both of which react with carbon dioxide and cause the carbon dioxide to be locked away. So now, instead of the carbon dioxide being produced, as soon as it's produced, it's locked away, which means the total volume of gas is going to go down. So we can actually now directly measure the rate of the chemical reaction of glucose plus oxygen goes to carbon dioxide plus water because we can measure the rate of use of oxygen. To measure a rate, what are the two things we need to know? Okay, what are the two things we need to know for a rate? Like rate of change of speed is distance divided by time. What's going to be, how do we work out the rate of oxygen use? What do you think? This is going to move, isn't it? So what can we measure about this? Speed. The speed. Yeah. So we can't measure speed directly. We need two variables to calculate speed. So what's the first variable we need? Distance. Distance. So you're going to take a, uh, a small uh, one of the marker pens here. And before the experiment starts, you're just going to put a mark. 
And then you're going to use a stopwatch for the time element, and you're going to time it for one minute. Okay? And then you're going to stop the process by opening the valve again, and that will stop the thing from moving. So the stop clock will start when you turn this valve. Now, when it ends, you turn the valve back to its position. So that's the trickiest bit in this practical. Once we've measured it at room temperature, we can start introducing our variable. So what's the variable you think that's going to affect the rate of respiration of these maggots? Okay, what variables might affect it? Think of one. <coughs> Antti? What do you think of one? Sorry. Go on. Well, that's a variable that's being produced. It's not a variable we're changing, is it? What's a variable we're changing? What could we change about this? Anyone? Yep. Number of maggots. Number of maggots, good. So the number of maggots is going to stay controlled. We're going to keep that controlled. Okay. Hmm? The maggots are in this. Are they alive? Yep, they're in there. So are they going the, to stay alive? Yeah, they're going to stay alive. Okay, it's an ethical experiment, but maggots were okay. Schools are okay to experiment on any organism that does not have a complex nervous system. So that's basically insects and worms and things like that. Anything like even fish, you would need to apply for a home office permit with a full kind of massive booklet of different instructions to say what you do. Obviously schools don't do that, but that's what they do if they're doing animal testing. Even psychological studies Okay, require that for anything with a more complicated nervous system. So it's only maggots. Uh, we can use it? maggots, we use water fly, we can use wood lice, uh, you know, very, very simple. So what we're going to have to keep constant then, is we're going to keep constant the mass of the maggots, that's important. But again, we still haven't sorted out what we're going to change. What we're going to change is, what do you think else we could change that would affect the rate of respiration? Yep. Uh, temperature. temperature, excellent. So temperature is going to affect it. And we can affect the temperature just by putting some, a water bath here. And we're just going to make a beaker of some water at 40 degrees. You're going to put the beaker in there. Okay, so you're just going to lower the apparatus into the beaker at 40 degrees. You've got to make up some water at 40 degrees. We're going to lower it into there. And then once you've done that, okay, you're going to leave it for a minute to acclimatize. Because this air in here has got to get to the same temperature as the water bath. So leave it for, say, two minutes to acclimatize so that it warms up the air, and then start the experiment again by marking the beginning, turning the valve, okay, timing it for one minute, opening the valve, and then marking again and measuring the amount it's moved. So we're going to do a basic rate, which is going to be in millimetres of oxygen per, uh, per minute. Okay, We can do a more complicated calculation later by working out the actual area, so volume, of this capillary tube, which you can do using the uh, volume of a cylinder. Okay, if we know the diameter of the capillary tube, which is about uh, a millimeter, then we can work out the uh, area of the circle using pi r squared, and then the equation for a cylinder is pi r squared times height. Okay, and we can actually work out the volume of gas, and we can actually convert that to milliliters per minute. But that's quite complicated. We'll see if we can do that at the end. So let's just demonstrate this very quickly then. I'm going to open this. And what you've got to do is you've got to turn it. You've got three little small prongs here. And we want to turn it so that only basically like that. So that this large, long handle is pointed towards the valve. OK? So 180 degrees, and then when you want to open it again, you turn it 180 degrees back again. Now it's going to start moving. Okay. We leave it for a minute. Now, what's really important about this apparatus is be very careful about moving it. Once we've moved it, we've got to not to touch it because it's very, very complicated. Secondly, when we're moving it from the sides to your benches, do it with two hands. Hold one hand on here. Hold one hand here, don't hold on to this, but just support it with the back of your hand so you don't want this to wobble because this, okay, is not particularly stable. And also you don't want this seal to break. And do it very carefully, being mindful to people around you so you don't knock it. And I can already see this is moving quite fast now. Off it goes, okay? 
I could put my finger where it is, just in case you can't see it. Still going. Still going. Still going. Now, the problem with the experiment is, of course, if it keeps going, it would reach the end, and that would be bad. Okay? Because now we have to reset it, and we can do that simply by slightly pressing in on the syringe. But that's quite complicated, so I'll do that for you. So I'm going to stop the experiment. I'm going to close the uh, valve off. I'll just show you this syringe bit. Okay? <laughs> to do the syringe, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close it, uh, put it like that. Okay? And I can just push slightly down on the syringe, very slightly. And if I push too hard on the syringe, okay, it will I push too hard on the syringe. it will just shoot out the end. I can move it all the way back to the end, like that. But that was very, very carefully done.